Hey, everybody, it's Miss Tennessee Teen USA 2018, Sophie Rovenstein, and you're listening to Life After the Crown with Tim Tialdo. Hey, everybody, my name is Tim Tialdo, and welcome to Season 2 of the Life After the Crown podcast. Now, if you haven't had a chance to listen to any of the previous episodes, I do encourage you to go back and listen, because there are many valuable interviews that you will definitely gain some wisdom from. Now, for those of you who are just tuning in for the first time, welcome and thanks for checking us out. Each episode of Life After the Crown, I interview former pageant contestants, title holders, and women of influence who share advice and stories on how to help you succeed in the world of pageants, but more importantly, how you can flourish in the professional world once your pageant journey comes to an end. As always, I appreciate you taking the time to download this podcast. I do value your time, and I'm glad you're here listening. So let's get started. My guest today was Miss Tennessee Teen USA 2018. She placed top 10 that year at Miss Teen USA. Since giving up her crown, she's gone on to walk in the coveted Victoria's Secret fashion show. She shot their campaign and has quickly made a name for herself in the modeling industry. She is from Nashville, Tennessee and still loves spending time there when she isn't traveling for work. She's from a family of six and loves volunteering with best buddies and enjoys telling her story and reminding others that God has a plan for your life even if you don't always understand it. Pageantry has definitely influenced her life, but the best part has been watching what has happened after the crown. And that's exactly why she is on with me today. Sophie Rovenstein, great to finally have you on the show. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Great to be here. Yeah. Well, hey, uh, quickly, while we're talking, I mean, uh, just happened in Nashville. You guys had a big tornado. I know you live right there kind of around where it was happening. Is everybody doing okay around you? Yeah, thankfully, me and my family are okay. Uh, unfortunately, it's just been it's pr- pretty heartbreaking to see the devastation all around us. So, um, but it's been really cool to see the community come together, and we're all we're all helping out, and uh, we'll we'll be just fine. All right. Well, that's good to hear. Um, quickly, I know I talked to you before the podcast started here, but for all of you listening. Um, I have heard your requests. I've probably gotten somewhere around 150 requests to have Sophie on. So I'm I'm thankful that she finally was able to catch up with me and we have her here. But uh, Sophie, normally what I do is I dive into the kind of the pageant career first and then we kind of go on to talk about all the other stuff. But as I was looking at your story this morning, I thought it might be a little better to go in chronological order and just kind of talk about your life as it evolved. So uh, I guess where I want to start with you is uh, you're from a family of six, as we mentioned. Are you in the younger yes. or older group of your family? I, I'm the oldest of four. So um, okay. I've always been kind of the, the big, big sister, mother type of role. But um, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's been a good, I love it. And Rovenstein is, uh, what, what's your background? Um, I'm, I'm 50% Norwegian. And my dad, I think, is a little bit of Dutch and German. So some something in there. <laughs> okay. Well, um, I know of you. I wasn't able to make it down to the year you competed in Teen USA. I had just had my daughter that week, so I wasn't going to make it. But um, I remember leading up to the pageant, I had crowned Kirby Self and Kavya Sambasivam, who were both in the top five that year uh, up there with you. Mm -hmm. And everybody kept saying, you know, because, you know, I think, you know, when we go into the pageant, everybody's talking about, well, you know, who's, who's there to look out for? And everybody kept saying, have you seen Tennessee? And I'm like, I haven't. And they're like, she's six two. She's a bombshell. They're like, she's terrifying. And you know, sure enough, I mean, you know, there, everything about you was uh, intimidating for a lot of the girls. Now, um, I was reading that you were five eleven at fourteen years old. Uh, I get, does yeah. height does height run in your family, or are you some sort of anomaly? <laughs> it does. It does. My dad is about six five, and then. My mom's 5'9", so I think the combination of them two got some tall kids. I'm the tallest at 6'2", but um, my sisters are all very tall as well. And my brother's so young, but I, I have a feeling he'll be quite tall as well. What's it like growing up in your young teens as such a tall girl? Is that is that difficult? Yes, incredibly difficult. I, you know, in a way, I think, I, you know, words hurt. And I think growing up, I was always kind of, it was easy. It was easy to, you know, poke fun at somebody who's significantly taller than the rest. And, you know, I was so skinny and, and awkward and just, I mean, it was, it was tough, but, you know, thankfully I kind of grew into it. But, um, you know, I think the, the moment you kind of decide to start embracing it, I was like, yes, I'm going to be the tall girl. I wasn't letting that kind of be, I, I chose kind of not to be, you know, ashamed of that anymore or to let those words kind of get to me. But it was, um, you know, it was, a, it was a process. It was not overnight for sure. And, you know, the whole puberty thing helped too. And <laughs> next thing I knew there was, 
there was, you know, modeling agents interested. And I was like, what? I'm pretty? Like, I don't understand. How did this happen? Yeah, so, yeah. Well, I want to <laughs> get, get into that a little bit because I know modeling actually started before you got into pageants. And um, as I was doing mm-hmm. some research this morning, I came across an article. I think, I, I believe you wrote it. I, I, was it Grok Nation uh, was the name yeah, of the? Yeah. The, the, yeah. So, and I read that and, and so much of it was really good. And I pulled a couple of quotes from them. I want to read one. And then we can talk a little bit about it. Um, This one in particular said, quote, at just 19 years old, I've already experienced five years of people telling me I'm not good enough. I'm not thin enough. I'm too tall. I'm not the ideal proportions. Those words sting. The things I had once loved about myself suddenly became flaws standing in the way of my lifelong dream. And when you hear critical words almost daily, after a while, you start to believe them. Why did modeling uh, become attractive to you if that's what you were experiencing all the time? You know, I think modeling was always something that was a passion of mine from the early ages. I remember being like very young, probably 12, and walking into Target and seeing a little girl on the sign and and she was so cute. And I was like, mom, I want to do that one day. (laughs) And, you know, keep in mind at the time I had like braces, like so skinny, so awkward. And I remember my mom being like, okay, yeah, for sure. Like, well, <laughs> like, no, nope, that's probably not where you're headed. But, um, you know, it was always something I wanted to do. And then, you know, just as it kept growing and um, people kind of started to take notice, it, it just kind of all the right doors opened. And I have always been one that trusts when the Lord opens the door, you you walk through that. And then if the Lord closes that door, you listen. And so, I mean, even through the theme, that has been a constant uh, throughout my life, through uh, the ups and downs and all the stories and through pageantry, through modeling, through everything else. And so I think, um, you know, for me, the, the reason that I ran into problems uh, initially with modeling was because I was also pursuing a track career in high school. And I had been the state champ. I was, you know, training very hard every day, four hours a day. I was, my coach was a former Olympian. It was It was very intense. And that's when I started noticing changes in my body. And it wasn't anything negative. I'd actually worked hard to look the way that I did. It just wasn't what they were wanting. And that's when I started hearing those negative words is, you know, you're whatever, you're getting too muscular, your measurements are too big, you're too tall. And a lot of these things, you know, I can't really change. (laughs) That's just, you know, how it is. And um, I remember, I remember one time going in to my agency, I was with IMG at the time, I was in New York. And I remember my agent using the word healthy. He said, you look really, you've been looking really healthy recently. And he used that as a negative, which I don't think the word healthy should ever be used to in in a negative or condemning way where, and that's, you know, exactly how he intended it. And, um, and so that's when you kind of have to take a step back and realize that something's not right here. And so that's actually, you know, kind of was the start of my journey where I was never quite good enough. And, um, you know, for modeling standards and, you know, everyone else probably would have been like, Oh, you look great, whatever. Um, but by modeling standards, when you're when you're not there at the exact measurement that they want you to be, you're not working. They're not you're you're not going to be doing um, you know what you want to what you want to do. Just at the time, you know that was what I wanted to do. That's how I was trying to make money. I you know wasn't going to college. That was I was pursuing that as a career path. And so for them to tell you that if you want this, you have to lose a certain amount of inches. And at the height that I was, I was, you know, very young. I was 16 when they were telling me this. And that's just not going to happen. That's not healthy, you know. And thankfully, I think I was surrounded by people who were very supportive and encouraging and helped me stay grounded through that. Because I think a lot of the times when girls don't have that, it's a really, you know, quick downhill spiral. It's not it's not easy at all because those words do hurt. Well, I, and I can I want to dive much deeper into that story because that was part of what uh, some of the research I had done this morning that I found in incredibly interesting. Now, you had several top agencies offer you a contract at 15 years old. Uh, you did end up yeah. going with IMG, as you mentioned, who also owns the Miss Universe uh, pageant. I have to say IMG with the modeling side is very different from the Miss Universe side. So in no way do I mean to um, you know speak negatively about sure, sure. that. Um, it's just a different, it's the industry. It's not any anyone's fault. It's just how the industry has been. But IMG was, yeah, at the time, a very, it still is a very top agency. And they, you know, were signed with a lot of, of the girls that I grew up really idolizing. And I thought if they could do that with her, they, they could do that with me. And so, uh, and the team was very sweet, you know, um, I initially felt like they really did believe in me. And, but, you know, you make decisions, you sign contracts and then things change. So, <laughs> you know, thankfully, not too long after I had turned 18, 
um, they actually kind of, they released me. They let me go. They said, you know, we don't see any real potential here at the size that you're at. And, you know, keep in mind, I was probably, I was a size two at the time, you know, just because I wasn't a little bit thinner in a certain few areas. It was basically, they said, you know, we don't, we can't represent you anymore. And that was hard too, because that kind of felt like my dream was, you know, coming crashing down around me. And I was like, what? No, that was what I was supposed to be doing, you know, but again, going back to just trusting that everything happens for a reason and that this is, you know, all part of God's plan. And um, that's when I actually moved back home. I was, I went to college. I I enrolled in Columbia State Community College locally. I started waiting tables. I just needed to get back to my roots and, you know, get away from all those, that negativity that had, you know, influenced me so heavily um, at just such a young age too. So um, I think I was about 18 or maybe I had just turned 19. Maybe I was, I was about to turn 19 when somebody suggested like, Hey, have you ever tried a pageant? And he, I was actually, so I was at Stony I was working at, at my restaurant. I was in my, my server's uniform. I am not <laughs> looking glamorous by any means. And that's when one of my coworkers, he says, Hey, Sophie, I don't know if you've ever thought about maybe trying a pageant, but I think you'd be really good at it. And I'm like, what? I have never even, that had not crossed my mind. I was not really in that. I just, you know, I wasn't thinking that way. And especially at the time, I was ready to kind of not get back into that modeling pageant, whatever. And I was like, you know, this has just been a really nice break from all that, but it might be, it might be good. And it was a very, it was a very foreign concept to me, but I was like, you know, let's just try it. You never know. You never know till you try. And I ended up entering the next day. I, you know, started prepping with a lot of the people in my community. Just, I remember one of my friends, Kevin Livingston, he just, uh, we would go to coffee and he would just like drill me with practice questions, practice interviews. Um, I do walking classes with my friend, Beth from and you know, just like all these just people that were like believed in me. And even though I was not a pageant girl by any means whatsoever, and they really had no reason to think I would, <laughs> I would win it. They were just like, let's do this. And I did, you know, I walked into that weekend totally unaware of what I was stepping into. And honestly, I have to say, I was so shocked when I came away with the crown that weekend. It was very, very shocking to me because I, I felt like everyone else was so you know, they'd been doing this for years, they were equipped, they were working with, you know, everyone, and they all knew each other, and they all had, you know, the prettiest dresses. And I just, I was so shocked. And I felt really blessed, very lucky to have that. um, Because I think that it winning that really opened up this next, you know, year or so of my life, where I just, you know, met the coolest people had such an amazing experience and um yeah it was just it was such a blessing yeah no no i'm gonna i'm gonna dig into all that because there's so such good stuff yeah, inside of like those no no you're doing that. great <laughs> there's such good stuff inside of those stories that i want to go over but i did hear you mention one thing um a little back in the story and that was when you went uh, to target with your mother and you said i want to be like those people on the wall i guess from someone who you know now models professionally and, and somebody who's very good at it when you think about modeling and obviously there's the aspiration of looking at someone in that case on a mural on the wall when you look at yourself in the mirror what is it that you say to yourself that you're like I think I could do this is it you know I like my smile my hair my height my face I'd I'd be interested to know kind of your mentality on how you said I want modeling to be what I want to do you mean like at an earlier age yeah yeah like um, the very first time you really thought like I want to do this like what 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 was going yeah. through your head as to why? Well, the very first time I thought I wanted to do this, there was nothing in the mirror that would have been like, yeah, you should do this. Like, in <laughs> fact, it was like I was still in the awkward stages. And I think even, you know, my mom at the time was a little surprised that I wanted to do that. But um, I do remember a moment getting my braces off, um, probably, I think, maybe eighth grade-ish, um, when I was like, whoa, like you could look in the mirror and my son, I look pretty. I had grown up, I was becoming a woman and I was like, oh, maybe like, maybe I could do something like that. And it was just kind of in a realization, like maybe I'm not this awkward kid anymore. And you just, I feel like I just kind of came into it to myself in a, you know, confidence type of way. And, um, you know, of course there was people that were always stopping me and asking if I did model. And it was always like, no, I, you know, people were giving me business cards. And I think it was just kind of a matter of time before I was like, you know what, let's just give it a shot. And, um, and thankfully, there was a, a very sweet team, AMAX Talent in Nashville, that was like so on board from the beginning. And they have been constant supporters all the way through. And up till now, they're still some of my closest friends. So they really helped give me my start. 
Yeah, and I'm sure that when people see you, obviously the height's the first thing that sticks out. But, you know, as I've seen yeah. you on video and, and seen pictures of you, I mean, I, I think what you said is very true. Your smile sticks out in a in a great way. It's a very unique smile, and it just pops off the Thank page. Thank you. And I think that's, you know, Thank definitely you so one of the attributes that, that helps you to stick out. Um, in that same article I mentioned earlier, there was another quote, and you had kind of uh, mentioned it just a little bit, but I thought this was really interesting, and I think girls would be very interested to hear this. Uh, you said, the first insight I had into the pressures and standards of the industry was when my New York City agent told me that I needed to choose track or modeling. Because I was training up to four hours a day, I had developed quite a bit of muscle. He said that my body, especially my butt, had gotten too large. If I wanted a future in modeling, he explained, I couldn't do track. And despite just becoming a state champion in the long jump and knowing that scholarships were on the horizon, I quit track. Why? Um, you know what? It's I, something I still look back on all the time. It? And I wonder, I don't regret it. I just think about the possibility of what, you know, could have been, I think I would, you know, be foolish not to wonder, but at the same time, I, I, here I am, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm very happy. I'm content. I think that it's fun to, to dream about what maybe could have been, you know, I was getting all these letters from colleges and, and my coach was so disappointed when I told him I couldn't run anymore. And, um, I had so much fun. I met some of my closest friends ever on that team. And, um, I think it ultimately for me came down to the decision of what could I pursue a career in. And at the time, you know, modeling was presenting a lot more of like an immediate type of career type of financial rewards versus track where, um, you know, I had had my fun with track and I think everything has its time. And I enjoyed that so much for the few years that I did that. But, um, I was, I think, at a place where I was, you know, ready to to pursue modeling more full time. Um, not that it didn't still hurt to give that up, but yeah, I think there's a time for everything. I don't know. <laughs> well, and I, you know, I guess I, I find it interesting that you know you, you've got some muscle on you. I mean, I think that's the one thing that um, when I did see you compete, uh, did stick out. You know, because as a teen, when you're that tall, when you're six two, I, most girls are either gangly mm-hmm. or clumsy, or they just haven't quite <laughs> figured out how to walk in I heels have been yet. That as well, yes. yeah. And you've got, you know, you've got I have strong. Been there also. <laughs> yeah, you've got strong, powerful, muscular legs coming down the runway, and it's like, wow, she looks like she's twenty five. So um, mm-hmm. I, I find it weird that they thought that that was a, a negative rather than a positive. Yeah, yeah, you know, and it, that just goes to speak to the industry. You know, they're looking for girls who are, you know, ultimately, you know, very, very thin. And most of the time, you know, most of the time there's some girls who are naturally very thin and healthy, but sometimes it comes at a very costly, unhealthy price. So um, just keep that in mind when you see the girls who are, you know, so skinny and you want to look like that, like, you know, you never know what they're dealing with, what they're going through on their end. So um, that's how the industry is built is to make you want to, to look at other girls and wish you looked like them. And that's just, that's never okay. You know, comparison is the killer of joy always. (laughs) And when you talk about high fashion modeling in New York city, I mean, the stereotype, you know, for the longest time has always been, you know, um, there, there's anorexia involved and bulimia and some of these girls starve Mm -hmm. themselves to try and make it. Um, and then I read this story and it just blew me away. Um, at 17, you're six, two, you finish up school early, you move to New York, um, you go to your agency on your first day in Manhattan, and the moment you sit down, the words your agent says to you are, quote, I could tell as soon as you walked in that you have some serious weight to lose. You're also very tall, maybe too tall. Clients don't want to hire someone your size. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I'll I mean never how do you not just words. like get up and walk out the door? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I'll, I'll never forget it. I have a very vivid memory of exactly the moment that happened. And it, it hurt, you know, that that never feels good, uh, no matter who it's coming from. But, you know, I think if there's one thing the modeling industry taught me, it was to be thick skinned. You can't, you're never going to please everyone. You know, there's always going to be somebody that doesn't like your look or for whatever reason, you know, and they'll probably tell you straight to your face. And that's, that's the part that's hard to get used to. Um, I think I had enough identity in, in me and who I am. And um, I knew, I knew who I was and I knew that that comment didn't take any of that away from me, but it still hurt. (laughs) Um, and you know, I definitely called my mom after and had a tearful conversation. Um, but I think if anything, that was, you know, that's part of the story. Like I wouldn't have as good a story to tell now if that hadn't happened. And, you know, I remember also a quote that I don't think is in that article. Um, but I'll tell you, I, I had a conversation with him probably a few weeks later. I had been, you know, trying to lose weight and be, be what they wanted me to be. And I remember, um, going in and saying, Hey, 
if I don't lose the weight, like, what does my future look like? And we had talked about, you know, every girl's dream is to walk the Victoria's Secret fashion show. And I had mentioned that to him earlier. And he looked at me and he told me, at the size you are, Sophie, you will never walk the Victoria's Secret fashion show. And that hurt too, because that was another dream that was just, you know, falling and, and never, it just it seemed to get further and further away from, um, from me. And, and I remember, you know, at this time, at this point, I'm, I was 16 and much thinner than I am now. And, uh, or even when I walked to the yes show. So for me, even when that did finally happen, that was, and it made it extra sweet, I think, because I was able to uh, to do something that I was told I would never do. So yeah, revenge is a dish best served cold, right? Yes, yeah, it felt really good. It felt really good. <laughs> well, you know, I, I and I, you know, I know you mentioned uh, in when you were talking about it earlier. They let you go eventually, saying they didn't think you could get you mm-hmm. hired, and then you go on to walk in. You know, what is arguably, at least in the pageant world, you know, the number one modeling show of all time. I mean, yeah, a- every yeah. girl I. I talk to would kill to be on that show yeah i mean i i would have done the same i uh i felt i do this thing every year where i write down goals and i have uh, goals that are within reason and i have another box that are for i call them dreams they're not even goals they're dreams and they're very unrealistic goals that probably won't happen but how cool would it be if it did and that year I had, I was about to put down Victoria's Secret Fashion Show, but I didn't because that's just way too unrealistic for me to even put in the dreams box. So I remember I actually put Win Teen USA in that box because that one felt like the more realistic. Um, <laughs> and, and, you know, for me to look back on that year and, and, you know, Teen USA didn't happen, but I was able to be like, no, you know what, but you know, it did happen. <laughs> um, and that, that show was uh, such a special one. So so now that we're yeah, talking very, about very it, I, I know it's the reason a lot of girls have tuned in because they want to know about this very specific thing that we're talking about. Now, when you uh, left IMG, I believe you signed with, uh, mm-hmm. is it JAG Models in, in late I 2018? Did, yeah. um, were they mm-hmm. the ones that helped you to get the job? They did. Yeah, um, they did. They put together a show package and every agency will do this thing where they, they have their you know top girls that they have. They print out uh, comp cards and they'll mail them to casting directors. And so this, this specific casting director probably had 300 <laughs> or more cards on his desk. And, um, somehow, some way my face ended up sticking out amongst all those. And, uh, I don't so know. It, I still it, don't know how that one happened. Well, <laughs> I wish be, I had an answer for you. And it wasn't your height that stuck out. It was, it was something else they saw. I'm sure. No, I'm sure it was a combination. I mean, he had, he had the comp card, but, um, I think, yeah, probably a combination for for Victoria's Secret specifically, they are very much about the personality, and I think I think that uh, that even th- that played a big role in me getting that job as well. Um, they had an interview process. They had two different castings. They had callbacks. It was not an easy process, and they were looking at I mean hundreds and hundreds of girls. And in order to stick out and to make it you have to have something different. You just have to, there's something you have to be set apart in some way. Um, and I, I don't know what it was for me, honestly, I still, I'm still shocked, but I think honestly, a big part of it had to do with probably some, some interview skills that I learned in pageantry. I think my smile maybe had something to do with it. I had, um, I had just a really, I was so excited to be there. I can't even tell you, I was like so excited walking in that room. Um, couldn't stop smiling. I was surprised I hadn't like peed my pants on the way in there. Like I was just so <laughs> excited. I was just, I, I was so nervous, so excited. And then, you know, walking up to that table with all these, you know, big Victoria's Secret executives, it was just, I mean, such a, such a great feeling. And then of course I leave thinking I definitely did not book that. Like you see all the other girls in the waiting room and you're like, what on earth? Like, how is there this many beautiful girls in one room? It's unreal so intimidating but I think at the time too I was just happy to be there so I almost was less intimidated because I was like nope I know I know I you know don't compare to these girls so it's fine um but then here you know I ended up being it was one of like I think it was maybe 15 new girls or maybe it was even less might have been 13 so I was I think one of 13 girls that had never walked before that got to walk that year so very very um blessed and thankful so Talk about the moment that you actually got the news. <laughs> yeah, that was uh, definitely top moments of, of my life for sure. <laughs> I uh, was I was asked into the agency. They said, you have this last minute casting that came up. They want you to come into the agency and film this like 
sometimes we'll have to like read a script or something for the camera. And so that's what I was, I was under the impression I was going into read a script. Um, so I come in and they have the camera all set up and they, you know, have me do my thing in front of the camera, like, hi, I'm Sophie and all that. And then they say, okay, now just, we need you to read this script. And I, I grabbed the script and I looked down and I opened it up and it said, congratulations, Sophie, you have been selected to watch the Victoria's Secret fashion show. And <laughs> I mean, just unbelievable. Like, I, I mean, tears. I was, oh yeah, tears. Like, oh, I could not. I cannot even put into words that feeling. It was just, I mean, disbelief, first of all, but also just like the amount of gratitude. Like that just, it's, it was it was crazy. So crazy. I called my mom immediately. Tears didn't stop for a while. I remember calling my sister and she picked up the phone and she, you know, was talking about, she was like, oh, hey, I'm so glad you called. I've been meaning to talk to you about this. And she kind of, you know, starts, you know, talking for minutes about something else. And I was like, Ellie, stop. I have to tell you something. <laughs> I just looked at Victoria's Secret Fashion Show and we were both like, what? Like screaming and crying. It's just <laughs> such a, such an exciting moment. And even for, you know, Nashville, which, you know, not that it was it, not the first from Nashville, but there's, it was just like such a, I went home and felt like the support and love of my community. Um, I felt supported by other girls that were my similar size. Um, I felt just so much love and support, even from people that I didn't expect it from. So it was a very, very, just such a positive experience. So thankful for it. When the excitement wore off, uh, was there any point in which you felt a little scared about what was ahead? Yeah, yeah. Um, I think there's definitely times where it was overwhelming, just the idea of being on a stage in lingerie in front of, I think there was like, I don't know the exact number, but it is millions and millions of people that tune in. And that's an overwhelming idea of, of just of doing that and having them just be like, okay, go, you got this. And I, was there, I remember standing there about to walk out and be like, wait, am I, am I prepared? Like, do I know how to, do I even know how to walk? Like you just have this moment of like, am I supposed to be here right now? And then I don't, I can't even explain it. But the moment before I walked out, I had this like wave of, Maybe it was courage, peace, whatever it was, it just came over me. And I was like, you know what, Sophie, this is go time. Like, this is your moment. Like you, this was not, this was hard earned. I, I worked hard to be there. I had years of rejection and failure to be at that moment where I was. And um, I think, I think this like gut instinct kind of thing kicked in and I just, I did it. I don't even know. I think it's all so blur, but um, so fun. We filmed it through twice actually. So I got, and I had two looks. So I actually four times was able to, you know, walk down the runway and then I guess also the finale. So, um, that was another two times, but it was just every single moment of being out there is just so exhilarating and fun and such a good energy. All the girls were super sweet, um, made so many solid friends and, um, just felt really loved and welcomed by that whole, you know, community there. Well, and you mentioned the people around you in Nashville, you know, obviously supported you were, were definitely behind you. I, I got to ask you this because I'm a dad. Um, how did dad feel yeah. about you jumping up in front of millions <laughs> of people and walking around in lunch? Yeah, um, there was definitely, I was more hesitant to tell him at first just because I wasn't sure how he'd respond. Um, because I think that's something that no dad wants to have to watch. Um, <laughs> but I told him, you know, apprehensively and I was kind of bracing myself for the response. And I remember just being so um, overwhelmed by how, how sweet he was about it. He was like, wow, that's awesome. And I was like, yeah. And he's like, that's great. That's a really big deal, isn't it? And I was like, yeah, it's a pretty big deal. <laughs> um, I think he, I think he recognized too that and my family and I are very, very focused around our faith. And I think that all of us recognize that me being there wasn't by chance. That wasn't, you know, it wasn't really anything I did. That was the Lord. And I do feel like the Lord opened that door for me. And I think my dad saw that too. And he was completely at peace with that being the outcome. And he was my biggest supporter through the whole thing. I remember him actually standing up to, you know, a few people who were, you know, kind of naysayers or, or being a little bit maybe judgmental about my decision to do that. And I remember him being the one that stood up to them and that really, um, really blessed me and made me thankful for him. So um, he handled it well. He definitely handled it well, despite the fact that he may have been a little uncomfortable by the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, sure. Now, one of the buzz moments from your uh, walking in the Victoria's Secret fashion show, I watched it this morning. It's been seen millions of times. It was uh, the fact that you blew a kiss to Shawn Mendes and, and he liked it. 
Um, <laughs> were you, did yeah, you have a crush yeah, or were you just having fun? He did. I, of course, who doesn't have a crush on Sean Mendez? I, um, <laughs> I think it was kind of just crazy the fact that I was on stage with him and, you know, we're encouraged also to interact with the performers and, um, he was especially fun to interact with. So, um, I made a quick little decision to do that last minute. I had no, no intentions of doing that, but, um, yeah, someone, you know, caught, caught it on film and posted it and Twitter was going crazy. I had Instagram, so many some Mendes fan pages following me. I had, I actually had some really crazy comments after that, like stay away from my man and all these things. I was like, Whoa, like (laughs) chill out on that. Um, That sounds like Twitter. Yeah, it was funny. Yeah, it was. Uh, But then I think it all got where he tweeted back and there was a whole, you know, a whole thing of people that were very interested in our business. So it was uh, pretty funny. Do you two stay in touch? Oh, uh, no. no. I okay. mean, no. <laughs> it was just a kiss. It was just a blown kiss. Got yeah. It. All right. Just uh, a blown kiss. <laughs> well, let's talk a little bit more about modeling, and then I want to get into pageantry. Um, I know a lot of girls, you know, at, at, they see somebody at your level, walked in the Victoria's Secret fashion show, uh, modeling at a, at a high mm-hmm. level. They're wondering, you know, modeling and money. Is it worth it? Can I do it? Is it, you know, something I can make a career out of? Um, I guess, you know, just where you're at right now, um, how would you answer that? Um, yeah, I mean, it's hard to say. And that is always kind of the thing you don't want to invest too much into anything if you don't know that it's going to be a sustainable thing down the road. And I think for a long time, that's where I was at. And I, it's hard for me to to speak to anybody else um, because you have to you have to feel it out. You have to see, you know, what are your agents saying? How what is the response like in the market that you're working in? And um, there's, there's so many factors that go into it. But, you know, I think that at the end of the day, you have to just trust your gut. You have to, you have to just kind of see how, how it's all, all working out. I mean, definitely you can make a career for yourself. Like you, you really, you can, obviously, you know, there, when you get to, to certain levels, I mean, models are some of the top paid people. I mean, especially, once you get to that upper level, there's, there's so much money in, in this industry. Um, you just, you know, you have to get there and that's the hard part. Um, especially early on, I remember my mom, you know, paying for trips to, to Paris and, you know, for me to meet agencies and clients. And if there is a big investment that initially that is, it's hard. And then, you know, just being smart about it, smart about money management, where you're taking your trips, where, where you spend that. But, you know, it's also, you, you have to be careful about how much you invest to before you get, you know, reach a point where maybe it's not, you know, maybe God has something better for you. That's not modeling. Um, and yeah, I, you know, I, I was there, you know, I wondered that a lot too. At the very beginning of my career also, like, is this what I'm supposed to be doing, God? Like, do, is this really where you want me? <laughs> and then, you know, things like the VS show happen. I'm like, okay, this is probably where he wants me. <laughs> have you yeah, developed I a, don't know. or have you found a modeling mentor? Like, do you have another model that you look up to or work with or, or she kind of coaches you? I think more than like a modeling mentor, I have mentors that aren't in the modeling industry. And I, I've always been a fan of escaping the industry too, like being able to be in it, but then also be able, being able to be out. So, that's, I'm sure that's a good um, balance. you know, like, yeah, it's a good balance. I, I think, you know, I, I probably could use a, a good modeling mentor, but, you know, I have so many wonderful, strong women in my life that have been such great influences. And, you know, a lot of them, whether it's their mothers, whether they're, you know, former beauty queens or whoever, it may be, just best friends or, you know, people you meet, they, I have such a good, solid community. And I, I genuinely think that's been one of the things that's kind of helped keep me sane. <laughs> um, because I think, you know, it is you know, modeling and everything, all that is a tough, it's not easy. I mean, even probably girls look at me and think I have it all together and that I'm doing fine. But I, let me tell you, I don't, you know, I have, I have my days too, or I am struggling to figure it all out. But um, I do have, you know, such a solid group of people. And I, I would say, especially back home, just people that knew me, you know, before it everything too. And, um, I think it's really helped me stay grounded. Did you have somebody that when you, uh, you got to, uh, walk in the Victoria's secret fashion show, did you meet a model that you were fangirling over or somebody you were just amazed that you were even around? Oh, for sure. Like all of them. (laughs) (laughs) Um, it was literally all of them. No, I, I mean, just a lot of the angels too, you know, you see them in your catalogs on your coupons and all that. And then you're just next thing you know, you're just standing there in real life with them. And a lot of them were just so sweet. I have to say Adriana Lima was just so precious. She was an angel, really, truly was. And uh, that was her last year. 
which actually her first year walking was the year I was born. And she had walked 20 years every year, not missing a year. Also, keep in mind, managed to have two kids in that time period um, and then still get back in shape for the show the next year. So I don't know how she did that, but such a hardworking woman, amazing and, and so sweet. She was so encouraging and kind. Just so many people that I was hanging out with backstage. I was like, what? How, how am I here? <laughs> so what should we be looking at moving forward in terms of modeling? I mean, do you have some other gigs lined up that you're excited about? Are you auditioning right now? I'd be interested to know kind of where you see this going. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I, uh, so I'm with women management now out in New York and, um, they have offices in Europe and, and all over. And I never, the thing with modeling is it's usually a pretty last minute industry where I really don't know what I have coming up until probably like the week of usually. Um, but yeah, I'm always, you know, going to castings and, and meeting clients. And I just got back from, uh, spending a month out in New York for uh, fashion week stuff. So I was constantly, I mean, that's, it's a crazy hectic schedule and, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's hard work, you know, you're putting in the work, but eventually it all, you know, pays off. So yeah, I'm still, you know, I'm still in that career building stage. I'm working, I'm working hard. I got a taste of it and I, you know, I want it. So we're, we're uh, making it happen. So stay tuned. (laughs) Very good. Okay. Well, let's talk a little bit about pageantry. I know you kind of breezed through the story a little bit earlier, so we'll dive right into it. Now I've talked to Kim Greenwood, who was your state director, who spoke so highly of you. She's the um, best. And, she's and, you the know, best. When she discovers somebody like you, she's excited, obviously. You know, I mean, there's certainly potential oh, there. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, somebody who has the height and the look. Um, but, you know, from what you mentioned, I mean, you were you were surprised you won. I don't think anybody else was, if I'm being dead honest with you. But <laughs> I, I'm interested to know <laughs> kind great. of, you know, when when you got, you first got that idea of pageantry and uh, maybe I could do this. Um, was there hesitations as to would you do it? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I just hadn't had a whole lot of exposure to that whole industry. So I remember being like, what was this even like, I don't even know that I did not know the first thing about going into that. I was, you know, very out of my element. And I remember after going to the the seminar, the initial kind of introduction thing we had, um, I remember being so nervous and so overwhelmed and just feeling like that was not like I didn't, I was so out of my element. And I've actually talked to people who saw me there since and they were like, yep, you looked it like you had my face was probably like, I had no clue um, what I was doing there. And I, I think I had thoughts after that too, of like, should I even be doing this? Like these girls clearly, you know, are taking this very seriously. And, you know, I was too, but it just, I hadn't had that same kind of, um, like time that I had put into it as far as like years of, of experience. And so, um, I don't think I ever considered not doing it cause I was already you know, I was in it and I was, I was going to do it, but there was definitely some times that weekend where I was like, wow, I, you know, these girls, they're good. You know, they all have the right answers. They all, they all knew what they were doing. And I think, you know, I, I didn't, <laughs> this is a, the fact of the matter. Um, I remember going into interview, you know, so nervous. I was like sweating and, um, just, I was just talked. I don't even know what it was. I still don't even know what my questions were, but it, I just remember being myself. And, um, at the end of the day, I think that's kind of what, what helped me win because I just wasn't, I wasn't filtered. I wasn't trying. I had no pre-planned answers. I had no idea what was coming, but I left being like, okay, I did that. That's <laughs> done. That that's done. Whatever. I don't know what I said, but, um, I, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. And then obviously going into teen USA, there was a lot more prep and I had a lot more of an idea of what a pageant really was. And, um, so there I had, you know, a lot more help, but definitely going into Tennessee weekend, I had no clue what I was doing. Um, a few weeks back, I had uh, Courtney Smith's on who was, uh, just gave up her crown as Miss Virginia. Now she's six one. So she's in the same realm as you in terms okay. of height. Yeah, for and sure. What, and one, of the, for the yeah, one of the questions I had for her is, um, do you feel like your height gives you confidence when you walk in a room or is it, uh, is, I mean, I know there are some girls that feel insecurity when they're so tall. How do you feel? Yeah. Oh, I mean, I have dealt with the insecurity regarding my height my whole life, but I think, um, you know, you, I, I'm probably always going to battle that where I have to, you know, t- choose the positive thoughts over the negative ones. Um, I, I hate that I'm taller than almost every guy that I <laughs> meet. <laughs> um, I have a harder time finding clothes that fit. I feel I don't know, maybe other tall girls relate to this, but I feel awkward in like dancing in groups. Like if I'm always taller than everyone else and I can see everyone's heads around me, 
And it's just so awkward. There's a lot of things that are really awkward about being tall, but there's also a lot of really good positive things. And um, I, I, I like to focus on those. I know that it's what's given me, I think it's given me a lot more confidence than it's given me insecurities. I like being the tallest in the room. I like wearing heels. I, I think it, you know, definitely uh, commands a certain maybe respect or I don't know, maybe like attention when you, you have like uh, people are aware that you're, you're there. And um, I've always, I've enjoyed, I've enjoyed it, but it definitely was a journey to get to the point where I was feeling completely confident in it. So yeah. I still have my moments where I am like, oh, I hate being this tall, but most of the time I really do enjoy it. Well, and you had quickly mentioned something that Courtney brought up, which was, you know, when you're six one, six two, you know, dating is a challenge, you know, and, and guys <laughs> so tend to be, they tend to be intimidated, you know, when you walk up and you're eye level with them and they're like, whoa, 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 whoa. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Have you found that to be the case? And you don't need to certainly dive into your personal life here, but I'm just interested to know how you've handled that. Yeah, it's always been on the, the forefront of any, anything. I'm always, you know, if you find a guy even on like Instagram or something, you always have to check how tall he is or, you know, it's anything. You're, I'm always like, how tall is this man? Um, because honestly, I'm 6'2". If I wear any sort of shoe, I'm You're six, six. definitely like a little over. Right. And then, you know, heels and I mean, just make me so tall. So I definitely, the guy has to be, I always say like 6'4", six, 6'5", six, at least. But, you know, we're, there's wiggle room. I, I like to be able to like feel like, the smaller one, if that makes sense. I don't know. (laughs) I like to feel like uh, he could like pick me up easy if he wanted to. So that's kind of the requirement, I guess. Sounds like you need to start (laughs) talking to some professional athletes uh, because that's that's where those those guys live, huh? (laughs) I guess so. Well, um, so you go to Teen USA, um, you get into the top 10. Um, I got to be honest, I was stunned, stunned that they did not put you in the five. Uh, but as you go back mm, and evaluate no, your, you. yeah, if you go back and evaluate your own performance, did you feel like, you know, everything was great? Did, were there areas where you were like, maybe I could have done a little yeah. better there? I, I'm, in, I'm interested to know how you felt you did. Yeah. You know, I felt great. I did. Um, I felt like I had done a good job of like staying kind of um, out of everything. Like I had, done, I think I, I, I stayed true. I performed like I wanted to perform. I had done everything that I had you know planned to do. We had talked about doing all the prep. I, I followed through and I, do feel like I, I performed well. Um, I do think, you know, throughout the week, there is like a certain amount of just a toll that that week will take on you. And so I do remember, you know, getting down the finals and just being like, wow, I'm exhausted. Like this is a hard week. Um, so maybe that played a little bit into it. Um, but you know, at the end of the day, I am so, I'm so content with the outcome because yeah, at the time, obviously there was some tears, <laughs> but I think, you know, you just, you take a step back and, you know, in hindsight, if that had happened, if I had won this team USA, I definitely would not have been able to walk the Victoria's Secret fashion show. In fact, I think there's some sort of agreement that you, you won't, you know, model lingerie or if you do, it has to be approved or something, you know, like I think it, it wouldn't have worked out the way it had if I had won. And um, again, I think that was, God's plan. He knew, he knew what I had coming at the time. I was so disappointed and he was like, just wait, you got like, just wait a few months and it will all, um, you'll, you'll understand. So, um, I try to keep that in mind now too, even when things don't go my way, I'm like, okay, what does God have next? That's going to be even better. So um, let me propose this question to you, if that's the case, Sure. if you literally could stand on the stage and they said, We'll either give you the crown for, of Miss Teen USA, or you can go walk in the Victoria's Secret fashion show. Which one would you have honestly chosen? I don't, you know, that's a, that's a tough thing. <laughs> I'm putting you at, on the, the spot, time, I, I know, think, I'm sorry. Um, no, it's okay. Um, I think at the time, I had invested so much into the, uh, the pageant you know, idea of, of winning Teen USA, and I think it did. I don't know, it's hard to know what I would have said in that case. Obviously, now looking back, I would probably choose Victoria's Secret fashion show, but um, <laughs> I don't know. It's very, it's hard to say. It's a tough one. <laughs> well, for everybody listening, I know they're wondering, um, is your pageantry career over or will you someday compete as a miss? Because if you do, I think a lot of girls are going to opt out that year and not compete just so they don't have to compete with you. So is that something that's maybe in the back of your mind? You know, I've thought about it. I have definitely have had um, moments where I have, have considered that. Um, but it's also very hard to know just, you know, what, what the future holds for me, as far as my you know career goes, it's hard to know. I'm not writing it off completely, but, um, as far as, you know, right now I'm, I'm pretty busy and there's, that would, you know, be another big time commitment that probably isn't 
doable right now. Sure. And you got plenty of time, by the way. What do you got? Seven, eight years left. So you're, you're yeah, yeah, no just turned 21. There. So, yep. <laughs> All right. So we got a few minutes left here. I got one more question, then we'll get into our uh, rapid sure. fire get to know you questions. Um, I know that literally every girl listening uh, would love to hear some advice from you um, as to, you know, how to pursue modeling at the level that you're at. Um, I, I guess without sugarcoating it, I mean, just give me some raw, honest, uh, advice for the girls. Uh, what would for, you tell for them? How to, to pursue modeling. Yeah. How to pursue modeling, you know, cause uh, look, the Victoria's secret fashion show. I mean, I've literally heard hundreds of girls tell me they would love to do that. I think every time I read a bio on the stage at the state pageants, that's one of the dreams that one of the yeah. girls wants to do. And so, you know, for if they sure. want to do that, um, I guess just some basic starter advice. I don't expect you to lay out their career for them. Right. Um, so if you really are new to modeling and, and don't have any sort of, uh, you know, background in that, my first recommendation would be finding a good, solid, and most importantly, legit mother agency. Um, and those will be probably, I'm, I'm assuming in smaller cities, most, most smaller cities will have some type of mother agency that can help, help facilitate and get your modeling career started. So they, um, and they have those contacts. They have contacts in New York. They have contacts in Europe. Um, so they are the ones that can, you know, potentially take your career to the next level. You just have to be careful. And every girl will ask me, is it, is it normal that they're asking me for money or that they're asking for an upfront fee? And, and my answer is always no, don't pay anything. If they believe in you and your potential as a model, then they won't ask you for anything up front. So trying to save you guys all from making a big mistake. Um, <laughs> don't, you don't need to take any classes. You don't need to do any of that, you know, expensive photo shoots. Obviously some shoots will cost a little bit, but um, nothing, nothing crazy. Um, definitely no fees up front. So, um, but when you do find that mother agency that does, you know, believe in you, you know, the opportunities are endless. They have the right knowledge and contacts and, um, you know, checking in with some of the models that they are signed with. How are they treating you? Just making sure that before you get into any contract, because, you know, I've been there too. I was, you know, in contracts and there was, you know, trying to get out of them and lawsuits. That's a mess you don't want to have to, uh, have to get into. So, um, but yeah, I also, I have Instagram DMs. I read them. I try to read them. And obviously I would love to help and we'll, we'll try to respond to as many of you if you have questions about certain agencies or, um, you know, how to get into it more. I can, I can help with that. Okay. Very good. Well, I appreciate you sharing that with everybody. Uh, you ready to do these 10 questions? Yeah, let's do it. All right, here we go. Number one, since you've already done the Victoria's Secret fashion show, what other modeling gig would be a dream job for you? Uh, cover of Vogue. Why not? <laughs> Love it. Number two, uh, who was your <laughs> idol growing up? Um, it's cheesy to say my mom, right? <laughs> no, that's cool. I think your mom would love to hear that. <laughs> Number three, which do you prefer more, New York City or Nashville? Nashville. Hands down. <laughs> love it. Uh, number four, what scares you the most? Um... I don't know. I is this on a deep level? I'm I'm very scared of water snakes. I don't know if that's a thing, but on a deeper level, uh, I'm very. I think I've always been scared of of failure or you know not not being uh, not doing doing well. I'm, my enneagram is the achiever, and we love uh, we love to achieve. Well, that's actually a good fear to have. Number five. Yeah. Favorite place to eat in Nashville. Ooh. So hard. Um, there's a, there's a place there's a place called True Food Kitchen in Green Hills, and that has like the yummiest food, but it's also healthy. So if I can get food that's yummy and healthy, then that's a it's a good day. That is awesome because my wife and I go to the True Food here in Denver probably once a month. Yes. We love okay. It. So there. Yes. It. Yes. Love that. Number six. Are you a mama's girl or a daddy's girl? Oh man, I don't make me choose. I uh, <laughs> I, I love them both equally. I can't, I can't. Okay, I, I can't get it. Choose. Number seven, favorite place you've traveled? Um, man, that's a hard one. I really enjoyed being in Austria. Um, so that was one. That's gonna be hard to top. But yeah, I've, I've definitely have been privileged to go to a lot of different cool places the past few years. Number eight, uh, what is your middle name? My middle name is Grace. First name is actually Sophia. So, Sophia uh, Grace. At what point did you start calling yourself Sophie? 
you know, my mom did from birth. So I don't know why she put Sophia on the birth certificate, <laughs> but that's what we got to work with. <laughs> okay. uh, number nine, what inspires you? Um, actually, my I'm with, involved with Best Buddies, and my buddy Caroline is one of the most inspiring women in my life. She's she's awesome. She has Down syndrome, and she does not let that stop her from doing anything. And last one, number ten. What is your next big goal? Wow, um, man, next big goal. I um, I don't know, <laughs> career wise or just. <laughs> I, you know, I guess you, I, you sound like you're somebody who probably does like a vision board type thing. You know, what, what's something I that try, you know, yeah. in the next year you'd like to achieve? I I would like to, while still pursuing my career at full speed ahead, I would also like to focus on spending you know more time at home and, and with the family and uh, just investing in things that, that really matter. Well, I don't hear that often. That's awesome. I, I, yeah. It's actually oh, yeah. very refreshing <laughs> <Yeah. What>? to hear. <laughs> Well, hey, Sophie, congratulations on all your success. And this has uh, been, so a, been an awesome conversation. And I know uh, it's going to get a ton of listens. So thank you so much for well, spending the time. You. Thank and, you guys for listening and for caring about what I have to say. I'm I'm honored. Yeah, and I hope we get to meet in person. I know we haven't had the chance. I, sure. Like I said, I wasn't at Teen USA that year, but I certainly look forward to that. And uh, thanks again for the time. You're awesome. Yeah, absolutely. So nice to, to meet you finally. Thanks for listening to today's episode, everybody, and to Sophie Rovenstein for her time. Now, if you want to follow Sophie, if you don't already on social media, follow her on Instagram at Sophie underscore Rovenstein. I hope you enjoyed the podcast. If you wouldn't mind, please subscribe. You can do so on Spotify, iTunes, the podcast app, Google Play, and YouTube. Or you can just go to lifeafterthecrown.com. And for weekly podcast updates, just follow me on Instagram at Tim T. Aldo. Until next time, remember the words of Romans 8.5. Those who think they can do it on their own end up obsessed with measuring their own moral muscle, but never get around to exercising it in real life. Those who trust God's action in them find that God's spirit is in them, living and breathing God. Talk to you next week, everybody. Talk to you next week, everybody.